when you're one of those, That's one of those games you want to start at the back and work to the front. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we were a little sloppy uh, defensively, which is very uncharacteristic for this ball club. And you can throw all that out the window when you uh, have the at-bats you have in the ninth inning. Yelly, great at-bat. Etch, uh, same thing, got a ball fisted in, and then Bohr worked the count, got it in his favor, and uh, got the ball in the lefty's wheelhouse, and he did the damage. So, uh, tremendous walk-off win for this ball club. These guys have been fighting. Sometimes uh, you get something like this, it's a great boost for you as you, um, you, know, as you play a team like the Giants. Uh, Dan Heron, had a, a, you know, he grinded. He had one of those ball games where he had to grind through. Uh, they, they fouled a lot of balls off of him, and his pitch count jacked up there. But he grinded through it, and uh, he, he even had a heck of an at bat there with the uh, with the crash and slash that he uh, ended up getting the first RBI. Just a uh, crafty move by a guy who truly understands the game and saw the first baseman crashing and uh, got it to two strikes and took advantage of that. So. Um, you know, when you you look at the uh, errors, we had three errors there that led to uh, a couple of runs, and uh, I know Danny, I think, gave up four runs, but only three earned. And then, uh, you know, offensively, we just kept grounding into double plays, five double plays. That's tough. You feel like you get a little momentum, get something going, and uh, to the Giants' credit, they made the plays and and uh, and kept the uh, big inning away from us. So, Heron was on his own on that. Yeah, that was him. He saw it. He read it. And uh, again, that's a crafty veteran that he is. He, you know, when Danny goes out there, it's one of those, you know, he understands the game so well. And uh, he understands who's on deck, how to execute pitches. And, you know, tonight they fouled quite a few off, ran his pitch count up. And uh, we wanted him to have that opportunity to get through that sixth inning. You know, he was one out away from doing it and left the ball in the middle of the plate to Crawford. But outside of that, he's going to give you that opportunity pretty well every night out there to give you a chance to win. But that was him on that uh, they crashed and he slashed the ball and uh, it was a tremendous read on his part. Moore has played a bigger role for this team than would have been anticipated back in spring training probably. What would you say about him? And tonight's kind of the cap, or what would you say about him? You know, when we took him in the Rule 5, uh, we knew he could hit. And uh, he really swung the bat well for us when he first came up this year. And then he had a little spell there where uh, his timing was off. And uh, over the last three or four games, you can see the timing come back. He's a strong, physical kid, very handsy hitter for a guy uh, that size. He's not just a power hitter, he's a hitter. And uh, when he got that ball tonight down in that zone, great to see and uh, certainly uh, a great boost inside that dugout for this ball club. PJ, I saw it was like two straight days. He, he saw him already in the big one yesterday for you as well. The, the power, like you say, it, it's there. We don't always kind of see. What do you think his evolution of his power is going to be? I mean, it, the power is in there. I, again, I'll go back. He's a hitter first. This guy's a very good hitter. He's a usually men that size, they're not very handsy. He's a handsy hitter that will spray the ball around. Uh, but you make mistakes on him, he can punish you. You know, We had some other yellies on base, I think, three times tonight. D had the big triple. And uh, our first four guys in the lineup, they scored four, uh, four runs. And that's, you know, that's huge to have guys to get on the base, realize what their role is, knowing some things have changed by G being out of this lineup. And we're, that we're grinding out at bats, and it's good to see. Frankie and Lenny spent a lot of time talking to these guys and looking at video and trying to get them to understand that that's what it's going to take for us to be successful, and they're doing it. With Justin Bohr, he hit less than 150 in June. What did conversations did you have with him, or what did you have to help him through there? Uh, the biggest thing was the timing. You know, it's strictly about timing with him. He uh, he's not just that. As I said, he's not just a power hitter, and uh, it was about finding his timing. And once he got that, allowing the barrel to arrive out front, then the rest of it he he can certainly do the damage. DJ, how big of a win with Jose going tomorrow, an opportunity to sweep the Giants, especially with him coming back? No, it's good. Anytime you can win series, that's what we try to focus on, a winning series. Well, we have that now, and obviously tomorrow's a huge day uh, for us with Jose coming back. 
that being said, we have to we have to stay in focus of what we're trying to do. Jose's got to go out and execute pitches, and uh, and if that happens, then you know we have a chance to do that. But it's going to be about pitch to pitch, game to game, and that's how we have to play right now with this hole that we've dug for ourselves. But this is a great boost for this team to uh, do something like this, and uh, hopefully the momentum carries us and uh, and we can ride this.